This was inevitable. The New York Knicks just got absolutely whopped by the Indiana Pacers so bad that I just had to make up a word called whopped. The inevitable has happened. It feels like the New York Knicks are tiring out, guys, and Dariel and I are going to discuss this. So what's up? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. We're back after game four. And, well, that sucked. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> that was really bad. I mean, I mean, you, you kind of hit it right on the head. Like, it kind of looks like the minutes are, like, finally catching up to these players. Uh, Josh Hart. I mean, today, Josh Hart only played 23 minutes. And um, Jalen Brunson played 30 minutes. Dante played 32 Isaiah Hornstein played 20, but the reason why they didn't hit their, like, minutes quota, if you will, is because this game was kind of over by the time the first quarter was over. By the time the first quarter was over, this game was a wrap. And I don't know, man, this, that, that Andrew Nemhard shot that he hit last game, that was such a dagger because if he didn't hit that, we could have went up 3-0. Instead, now we're tied. Wait, we could have went up 3-0? Yeah, we could have went yeah. up 3-0, but now we're tied 2-2. So it just shows you that, like, Every little play in the playoffs has such a magnifying effect. And, yeah, man, they just didn't have it today. You're right, because let's say this happens after Nemhard missed that shot and if the Knicks hit their free throws in game three and they won that game, we'd be in this like, all right, well, that kind of sucks that the Knicks are going to have to play an extra game before they go on to face the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals because just rest is so important. And now we have to watch them play one more and kind of sweat things out a little bit. Instead, now we're looking at it where this the series is evened up. The odds are minus 110 each for who's going to win. So it's a complete pick up now. Clearly, Jalen Brunson's injured. Isaiah Hornstein got hurt. OG's out, and he's probably not playing game five. I think he's out for the series. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think the only way is if it goes to seven, and he, he'll be, like, questionable. Because, like, that hamstring thing. I mean, everyone just looked exhausted. There there was no other way around it. The Knicks looked, looked exhausted. The Pacers came out and punched the Knicks right in the mouth. And, I mean, we had four points with five minutes left in the first. When that game, when we were looking down the barrel of a 34-14 score at the end of the first quarter, as you said, it was over. Because you start thinking, it's like, yes, a 20-point lead with all that time to go, with three quarters to go, is so easy to come back from. But when you're the Knicks, when you're this tired, when the Pacers are out doing their thing, it was so unlikely that they were going to come back. And outside of that, it's not like they had the world's worst game. Like, they had a better second quarter where it was a little more back and forth than the Pacers won it. And the third, the Pacers just kept hammering at home before the Knicks just kind of gave up. But shout out to Alec Burks for really coming in completely cold in game three. And these last two games, he has actually been a very solid role player for the team, which does give them some more help on the bench, which is nice. It gives them some more scoring. We saw any available body that the Knicks had, they played tonight. The only guys who did not play were the injuries. And yeah, no, it was literally just the injuries tonight. Yeah. So... I don't know. They they emptied the batch. What's up? The only thing, so in the playoffs, we've seen, this isn't the first time that a team just got completely blown the hell out. Like, we've seen time and time again where teams that are trying to repeat, they actually get blown out. They lose by 30 points in the playoffs. The only thing that I'm a little worried about is because we got blown out by, I don't know, 30 points today. And every game in the playoffs is has its own life. So just because we, we got blown out by 30 points, that doesn't give them an extra playoff win. They just won one game. And on top of that, the Indiana Pacers, they did what they were supposed to do. They protected home court. But the reason why I'm a little worried is just that it just looks like this is going to have a lasting effect going into game um, going into game five because of the fatigue factor, just how tired these players look and the energy level being so low. I think that's I think that's gonna that's gonna spill over into game into game um five. The only thing that I think was gonna help us out is the crowd. I think the crowd in game five is really gonna be huge. Going back home to MSG, that crowd is gonna be going bonkers. And Knicks fans were known as being one of the better fans in the NBA. So we know our basketball. We know what the players are going through with playoff minutes, physicality, the intensity, all that stuff. So MSG, if you if you guys are watching this and if you're going to game five, the crowd is I think is gonna be a really important factor. We need to give this team an energy boost because right now 
we're playing with like dead legs. Like you said, Brunson is looking like he's super just gimpy and he's just like hobbling around. Josh Hart looks exhausted. Isaiah Harnstein kind of hurt himself today. Dante DiVincenzo had a really, just a really bad shooting day. Um, I also wanted to touch up on, it's not a really a big deal, but something I've been noticing with Brunson is like, he's just not been hitting his free throws, bro. Like, and I'm not, I'm not saying that Brunson needs to go 100%, like 10 for 10 from the line. Today, he was 6 of 9 from the free throw line, 66.7%. It's not terrible, but me personally, I, I'm holding Brunson up to, like, you're the best player on the, on the team. I need you to go, like, 8 for 9. I need you to go, hopefully, 9 for 9. And three misses from the free throws is not the biggest deal, but when I see you missing free throws game in and game out like this this game it didn't matter because even if you hit all his free throws we're still gonna get blown out by like 28 points so it didn't matter but look at last game he missed a few free throws and then that andrew nemhard shot came to bite us in the ass that's just something else i've been noticing is game five gonna be on tuesday or yeah so game five is on tuesday night in okay. new york so we don't get the three-day rest which sucks we haven't gotten one all series obviously that benefits the pacers i'm bummed obviously I didn't know what to expect this game. I think it's hard to be a Knicks fan right now and go and expecting the team to play badly because they've just constantly been overachieving all season. Facts. You're also right. Yeah, they lost by, what, 32 points tonight. And they also lost yeah. one game in a playoff series. Like, it's not like because they lost by a ton of points, they it counts as two losses or anything. The series is still tied up. You have home court advantage still. The Knicks still have an advantage. It's just now things have gotten a lot more real where it felt like two games into this series, the Knicks were probably going to sweep them. Now, obviously, the playoff series has been thrown completely on its head. With where the Knicks are at right now, I just think it's time that they start Dariel Concha at power forward. Yo, I'm crying. Dog, I'm... Dog, and those days are so done. They're so, they're so, they're so gone, dog. If this was like five years ago, maybe, but nah, bro. I, I can't even, even if they give me a, a freaking 30 minute contract, I wouldn't even be able to give them anything, dog. So, <laughs> so honestly, we're really, I'm really relying on Brunson. Um, I kind of wanted to ask you so, in the beginning of the series, you had Nixon five. I believe. Yeah. So obviously that's not happening anymore. So do you have Nixon six? You got Nixon seven? Which one? Really hope that it's Nixon six, but I don't know. Like I genuinely, after this game, and it's not just this game. I'm with you. It's the fact mm -hmm. that, and given every team gets blown out at least once in the playoffs, as you said, like look at that Warriors team when they were at their best in 2017, when they went 16 and one in the playoffs. They lost one game, and albeit it was to the Cavs, who were the second-best team in the NBA by a wide margin in each way. But um, the Cavs blew them out that game. And it's like, oh, well, it's, you know, game four, and they're down 3-0 anyway, so we know who's going to win the final still. But it's like every team gets blown out. Every team has a bad night. I think the Knicks are fatigued. I think that's part of it. It doesn't mean that everything is over and that all hope is lost. Shout out to Tibbs for benching the guys early. I mean, out of all the starters, Josh Hart not playing the most minutes was awesome. <laughs> like, it's just good to see. Like, did you see the way he was looking on the bench though? That's a little worrying. He, like, he looked like it, 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 the look he had on the bench wasn't like, damn, we really just didn't come to play today. The look he had on the bench was like, damn, how are we going to move forward? And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that look on his face because it, it just seemed like it was a lot more than just this game. But maybe that might be too that might be me reading too much into it, so I don't know. I um I obviously was not on the game three post game, but uh something I just don't like watching is Josh Hart guard Pascal Siakam. He just can't do it. Mm -hmm. He just can't. He's too small. Like he can't mm -hmm. guard him. And we're clearly missing OG, but it's also the fact that we're missing Randall and Mitch. I hate Siakam's like, game, bro. I hate Siakam's game. It's so predictable. Two dribbles, spin off, and then just flail your arms, fall into the floor, try to get a call. Get up. Get up. I know what you mean. It, it's You're not wrong. And, it, I mean, OG put him in jail, but no. Siakam's doing his thing now that he's got 6'4 <sighs> Josh Hart on him. And Josh Hart usually can hold his own as a power forward. Don't get me wrong, because the way the NBA's moved, there's only a few true power forwards left in the NBA. You got... Pascal, Zion, Julius Randle, and like Paulo Bancaro, 
are all true power forwards, or, like true modern power forwards. Everyone else now, for the most part, is like a spot up or something. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I, he's not a power forward, but Jason Tatum plays power forward for the Celtics. He's a superstar. It's a little different. He's not a superstar, but he's a star. So that's a little different. Wait, did but you when get... you look at it, go ahead, go ahead. Pascal is just a bad matchup with OG being off the court for us, which sucks because it's like, if we're going to lose to a pacer, I'd just rather it be Tyrese because it's like we're looking at a guy who's worse than Julius Randle but who plays very similarly to Julius while we don't have Julius. It's really infuriating to me. But uh, at the end of the day, they have to just – like this, I think – and I don't want to start talking like, oh, the Knicks are going to lose this series because they could easily win it. I, I'm i standing by that the Knicks are going to win because I'm a Knicks fan. I'm not, I'm not giving up hope. But like – regardless of what we're looking at with all these injuries and the way the Knicks have held their own, what a season it's been. I hope it extends to another round. And I honestly still think it will like look what it took for the Pacers to win game three. Wait, so you, I think you answered, but you got Knicks in six because you don't want it to go to seven. Yeah, I'm going Knicks in six. Okay. I'm going, I believe I'm going Knicks in seven, but I like I I like to call myself, and I, I'm gonna include you in this as well. We're both realists, and realist yeah. and realistically, the bodies are starting to wear down. So I'm trying to put this out there into the universe. I'm trying to get ahead of it. If we lose, I am I am getting ahead of it, and I'm telling everybody that's watching, we lost because our bodies are wearing down, and we just Brunson is not healthy, and we just don't have the capable bodies to move forward. So I don't want if anybody's watching this that's an Indiana Pacer fan, don't don't try to get on our back and say that we were unrealistic and we were just naive. No, we realize what we realize what we're doing. We're playing against you guys, and yeah, we had the lead, but looking at the team we have now, we just our bodies are just wearing down. Like I keep saying, what I was also gonna say is, if we do if we do by some chance get past this round. Yo, going up against what it would seem to be Boston, because Boston is up and down. Sometimes I don't know what kind of Boston team that we're going to see on TV. But Mm -hmm. if we get to match up with Boston, like, yo, I don't think it's it's no shot that we have (laughs) going up against Boston. It's one of those things where if you met in the first round at the beginning of the playoffs, and let's just say OG didn't get hurt, and the Knicks and the Celtics played in the first round for some weird reason, just because, hypothetical. Then I think it's an interesting series. Now? Now I don't think so. Now I think the Celtics would run through them, which sucks because I think a, a fully healthy Knicks versus a uh, healthy Celtics, so like Porzingis being there, would be an outstanding playoff series, would be the, a great Eastern Conference Finals. I'm I'm really curious to see what happens in as long as the rest of these playoffs go. Maybe Donovan Mitchell can do us a favor and knock the Celtics out, but the Cleveland Cavaliers are doing a bang up job at having Donovan Mitchell and well four guys who are just playing way below what they should be. This game sucked. We know that, but one more sleep, two more sleeps. We'll be back Tuesday night. New York Knicks, Indiana Pacers, Game Five. Easily the biggest game of the series. The amount of times, I don't have the exact stat in front of me, but it's something like four out of five times or three out of four times, team that wins game five, they win Mm. the series. So this is a must win for the Knicks. Absolutely is. Yeah, I think it's like 80%. I think it's like 80% go on to win whoever wins game five or something like that. Yeah, no, it's like four out of five times. It's something insanely high, especially at home with the Knicks crowd. They got to win this one. So, guys, Facts. make sure you subscribe to Knicks Digest so you can hear me and Dariel either be really happy on Tuesday or be pretty bummed out. But with that, it's all we got. Go, Knicks. Y'all know what it is. Jalen Bronson for all the MVPs. <sighs> Taj Gibson for president. I honestly am going to add a new one. Diakite for vice president because the man came in and got a tech almost instantly. So that was just awesome. I'm crying. Shout out to him. <laughs> I'm crying. Guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.